Hi everyone, welcome to week four of Give Me Five. We've been looking at 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, uh, talking about the manifestation, spiritual gifts, the nine that Paul lists, and also their proper operation. This was part of a larger series that we've been doing here at First Assembly of God called Spiritual Things in Church because there's spiritual things everywhere. Sometimes we have to discern what spirit they come from, right? So this week, I take just a little side trip, and instead of talking about spiritual gifts, I want to talk about spiritual fruit. In Galatians chapter 5, the same author, uh, a letter to a different group of people, he writes about the fruit of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Sometimes we can miss this. Uh, we can talk about the gifts and miss the fruit. Well, I believe we could safely say that the Christians in Corinth uh, that Paul addressed the two letters, First and Second Corinthians to, were immature Christians. They certainly were being used in the gifts of the Spirit, but they were a little deficient in the fruit of the Spirit. Well, as, just as the Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts, the Holy Spirit also produces spiritual fruit, but fruit is singular. In other words, uh, the, the Holy Spirit doesn't give one person peace and one person love. Uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't give another person goodness and another person self-control. No, fruit meaning uh, the Holy Spirit produces all of these things in the lives of believers. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 is where we get the list of uh, spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's nine of them, just as there are nine manifestation gifts uh, list, listed in 1 Corinthians 12. I think we can be pretty safe in saying it that just like the nine manifestation gifts are not exhaustive, they are representational, we can say the same thing about spiritual fruit. If there are other godly traits uh, that are not listed here, certainly we could include that in spiritual fruit as well. Uh, let me read uh, something for you here from Galatians 5, a uh, handful of verses starting at verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting one another so that you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, that means the Holy Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean that uh, the law, the Ten Commandments, uh, don't matter anymore? Well, not at all. Uh, we're talking about outward actions, though. When we are under control of the Holy Spirit, that is something that happens on the inside, and that is going to produce fruit on the outside. This is something that a lot of people struggle with, and uh, I'm going to go on record in saying I'm not always patient and peaceful and not always as kind and as good as I should be. You see, we walk around in this stuff right here. It's covering our bones. It's called flesh, and more so, uh, flesh is an attitude. Flesh says the carnal side of us, right? The the unregenerated side, I guess we could say. Um, even though when we were born again, our spirit is made new, our mind and our flesh still has to come into obedience to our spirit, and our spirit is being communicated to and instructed by the Holy Spirit of God. So really what we can see from this study today and looking into this passage of Scripture from Galatians 5, comparing it to what we've been looking at in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, is that it's not an either-or proposition. It's everything together that the Spirit-led man or woman or boy or girl is one who will not only seek the, the, the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, but will also seek to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Would you pray with me? Father God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that believers in Jesus Christ are not left on our own. I thank you for your word, and I also thank you that the author of that word also indwells all believers. 
And when we give place to the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives, we can produce fruit. Fruit like is mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Father, I pray that we don't approach this from an either or uh, attitude, that we could say, God, I want to produce fruit that others may know that I am a Christian. And Lord, I also want to seek all of the giftings that are available through the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to be complete and balanced and and perfect in the biblical sense. Perfect meaning absolutely complete in every way. Father, just take us as we are, I pray, and make us just a little bit more like Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.